Today's lesson is on gas law stoichiometry. So we're going to revisit stoichiometry, but now keeping in mind the actual gas laws that we've uh, learned at the beginning of this uh, gases and atmospheric chemistry unit. So let's recall, stoichiometry refers to the relationship between the number of moles of the reactants and the number of moles of the products in a chemical reaction. So you, you, it's going to be really important that you know how to you know, remind yourself how to balance and how to put together uh, formulas for, uh, for this chapter of the unit. Now, according to Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes, when gases react, the volumes of the reactants and the products measured at equal temperatures and pressures are always in whole number ratios. So what we looked at was how if we were, you know, when we looked at the balanced equation and, and how the balanced equation represented um, like the number, the coefficient in front of each um, compound when balancing um, also was equivalent to the number of liters that were found, right? So it was, it, it, so the mole ratio um, is what we were trying to find with the stoichiometry before, but now we're looking at it in terms of um, actual volume. The mole ratios from a chemical equation are the same as the ratios of the volumes of gases. So if we had, let's say, um, uh, X volume of, um, of a gas formed um, that was one to one ratio, the volume of the other gas would also be the same if they had the ratio one to one in terms of the number of moles. Okay, and we'll see that. Uh, it'll make a little more sense when we actually go through some of the uh, sample problems. So, let's look at the first sample problem. Ammonia is produced by a reaction of nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Suppose that 12.0 liters of nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas at the same temperature and pressure. A, what is the volume of the ammonia gas that is produced? B, what, it, what volume of hydrogen is actually being consumed? So, before we um, actually try to figure out what kind of calculations we need to actually find here, first off, start off with your equation. And from this equation, we've also got the equation balance. So from this information, what information do we have? Well, we have 12.0 liters of nitrogen gas. So we're trying to find the volume of ammonia gas and of the hydrogen gas. So that, these are the ones that we're trying to find. So now, going back to stoichiometry, right, and how we said, well, one thing I like to do is I like to list uh, my unknowns first. Uh, so what we have, what we have here is, um, let's include one more. So we're trying to find um, hydrogen, ammonia, and we've got nitrogen. So we've got, these are the actual compounds that are involved with this, um, this equation. Before we were trying to find the number of moles and the number of molecules. And molecules in the sense of not the 6.02, we're treating it as the old fashioned, the coefficient in front of each compound uh, and the number of molecules that we're finding. But now we're gonna add one more component to this. And in fact, one of them we're not actually going to use anymore. And it's this molecules one I'm going to ignore. So instead of it, it what we're gonna use is a mole to volume ratio. So, let's look at um, the information that we have. Well, we've got a volume for uh, nitrogen, which is 12.0 liters. We are trying to find the volume of um, the ammonia, and we're gonna try to find the volume of the hydrogen. So I'm gonna put volume there. Uh, I'm just gonna write it, because remember, we don't wanna use the same letter for the unknowns. So, actually, you know what? Let's make things a little simpler. Let's keep that as X, and let's put that, denote that as Y. So when we try to find it, um, we're trying to find uh, this Y for our unknown. So let's look at uh, the number of moles. So hydrogen, we've got one, uh, so, oops, we've got three moles. Right, we've got three moles of hydrogen. We've got uh, two moles of uh, ammonia gas, and we've got one mole of um, the, uh, the, the nitrogen. So as we said before, what I like to do is 
separate the two sides. And what we're trying to do is, question asks us, volume of the ammonia gas. So we're doing the ratio now of ammonia to nitrogen. Right? So the ammonia to nitrogen, and we keep those numbers, so we've got two moles of the ammonia over one mole of the nitrogen gas. Two moles is equivalent to however many, whatever the volume happens to be, over what is the volume of the, uh, the nitrogen? 12.0 liters. So all we're trying to do here is try to isolate for our unknown volume of ammonia gas. So we're going to bring this 12.0 liters over, right? and we're going to have the volume of the ammonia gas is equal to 2 moles of the uh, ammonia gas multiplied by 12.0 liters. We've got 1 mole of nitrogen here. Right? And so what we're trying to do now is the units here cancel out. We multiply 2 times 12.0, and we get a volume for ammonia of 24.0 liters. Okay? And so pretty much you could almost figure this calculation out without having to actually go through the steps. So if we're going from 1 mole of nitrogen to 2 moles of ammonia, if the volume was 12 liters and we're going from 1 to 2, we're just multiplying by 2, which means the 12, we're multiplying by 2 to, uh, to the original volume of the, ammonia, of the uh, nitrogen to give us the volume of the ammonia, which means, now, to kind of save some time, right, let's ignore this one, right, because the next part of the question asks us for the volume of the hydrogen that's consumed. So we can go through these steps as we did with the ammonia, or we can look at what we've got. We're going from one mole of nitrogen to three moles of uh, hydrogen, right, according to the, the ratio. So the one to three. So which means 12 liters is going to be multiplied by one to give us our volume. And 12.0 liters is going to be multiplied by three because it's a one to three ratio, which will give us a volume of 36.0 liters of hydrogen gas. Okay, so let's just kind of go back. So what did we find? The ammonia gas came out to 24.0 liters. The hydrogen came out to 36.0 liters. So we, even without having to go through all these calculations, we know that we're a one to two ratio for the ammonia. So for this ammonia gas that we're producing, it's a one to two ratio. So it will be double the volume. All right? um, the hydrogen is three times the amount. Right? Hydrogen is three times the amount. Right? So whatever the volume is of, it's, uh, of the uh, nitrogen, multiply it by three, and in fact, we're gonna have 36.0 liters will be of hydrogen. Okay, so nice and simple. How to solve gas stoichiometry problems. So let's um, look at the actual steps. So first step, as always, write a balanced equation for the reaction. Right. Next, right, really important that you know your formula. It's really, really important, really important to know your balancing because if we weren't able to balance that last equation, we were going to get um, that answer wrong, obviously. Uh, next one, write the given information under the appropriate reactants and products, right? So, we, we, you know, so what is given, write it underneath those, uh, those compounds in your formula once you've written out your balance equation. Put a question mark under the reactant or the product for which the information is what you need to find. Right? Convert all the amounts to moles, right? So find the actual mole ratios. Uh, compare molar amounts using stoichiometry ratios from the balanced equation. So solve for the unknown molar amount, which is what we did with the uh, first sample problem. And then convert your new molar amount into the units required. You may multiply by the conversion factor or use a set of conditions with the ideal gas law. So sometimes you may need to find the number of moles 
of your unknown in order to be able to then use the ideal gas law. Okay. So let's go through the uh, next sample problem here. Ancient alchemists uh, like to use strong sulfuric acid to produce dramatically dangerous effects. One interesting reaction occurs when sulfuric acid reacts with iron metal to produce gas and an iron to compound. What volume of gas is produced when excess sulfuric acid reacts with 40.0 grams of iron at 18.0 degrees Celsius and 100.3 kilopascals? So, we've read it once. My advice to you, read it again. Right? It seems almost like a tongue twister. It seems like, oh my goodness, there's so much information that's being given. But, break it down. Right? Go through it again. So, what I'm going to do is, let's save. You know, save our unit. So you can pause it right now, or um, you can kind of just follow along. So pause it, take a moment, figure out what is the actual formula, or what is the actual, uh, or, or write out your balance equation. Remember, that's the first step to any type of stoichiometry problem. Write out the balance formula, or balance equation. So, balance equation. Just writing out some of the givens. Balance equation is as follows. Iron, in solid form, plus the sulfuric acid, in aqueous form, produces hydrogen gas and iron to sulfate, right? It's a, some kind of an iron to product, so you have to figure out. Um, and if you look at this, um, it's a single displacement reaction. So I've gone a couple of um, our givens off to the side here. We've got uh, the mass of iron, which is 40.0 grams. We've got the temperature, which is 18.0 degrees Celsius, and we always want to convert uh, temperature to Kelvin, so equals 291 Kelvin. And we've got the pressure of 100.3 kilopascals. So, as we said, the next step, what we want to do is write out what our givens are. So, one of the givens is 40 grams, 40.0 grams, of iron. So it's asking us now what volume of gas is produced. If you look at our formulas, the only gas that's produced is hydrogen gas. So that's what we're trying to find. Right? That's, that's the one we're trying to find. So using the information that we're given, well, we've got iron. So we want to convert, we want to find actually the number of moles of this iron. And so what we do is, well, we know the number of moles of iron is equal to, well, the mass divided by the actual molar mass of Fe, right? So you want to find the molar mass of Fe. And the molar mass of Fe is 55.85 grams per mole. So divide those and we get 0 0.7162 moles. Okay, so that is the number of moles of iron, Fe, 0 0.7162. So we're comparing iron and we're comparing the hydrogen gas. So we know using the stoichiometry chart that I've used in the past, so we'll go back to the old lessons, right? We have the following. We've got our unknown, right? which is hydrogen. That's what we need to find. We've got our iron. We know moles and the old-fashioned molecules. Right? So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So one-to-one. -one. What were the number of moles of iron? Well, the number of moles of iron, we just found 0 0.7162. We are trying to find the number of moles of the actual gas that... Um, that is actually produced in excess, right? So what we can do is well, we separate the two and write it down as a fraction, x over 0.7162 uh, equals one over one. But because it's a one to one ratio, what, is, what are the number of moles that are produced of hydrogen? And the number of moles produced by hydrogen is no longer an unknown, but because it's one to one, it means it's gonna be the same. 
So the number of moles of hydrogen gas will also be 0 0.7162 moles. Okay, so the two, the, the, the number of moles produced is the same. So what volume of the gas is produced when excess sulfuric acid reacts with the 40 grams of iron, but it's at 18.0 degrees Celsius, right? So what we're going to do is use our ideal gas law. So what we're trying to do is what volume of the gas is produced. So what volume of hydrogen is actually produced? So we're going to isolate for V. So another bit of information that we should put in our given is our R value. And our R value is 8.314 kilopascals liters per mole Kelvin. So what we're going to do now, we're going to substitute into this equation. So V is equal to our N, which is 0 0.7162 moles. I like to include extra significant digits and then round off at the very end. Uh, my R value, 8.314 kilopascals uh, liters per mole of Kelvin multiplied by our temperature uh, in Kelvin, which is 291 Kelvin, all divided by the pressure, which is 100.3 kilopascals. Now, the next thing I like to do Cancel out my units. So we've got kilopascals, moles, Kelvin. Last unit standing, liters. So I throw that into my calculator. My volume equals 17.276 liters. Least number of significant digits in my question is three. So I take the 17.2, I look at that seven, and my volume of hydrogen gas that's formed is 17.3 liters. Okay. So volume of gas that's actually produced in excess sulfuric acid is 17.3 liters of hydrogen gas. Now, including water vapor pressure in gas calculations. You can collect many gases by allowing them to bubble up through water into a container that is filled with water. Now, unfortunately, though, molecules of water vapor mix with the gas sample. Right? So if you're collecting a gas in, um, you know, in, in water, right? you, that bubbling of water, you're going to include part of that, um, that pressure of the water. Right? So to avoid error, the pressure that was contributed by the water vapor must be subtracted when finding the pressure of the gas. So, as an example, consider hydrogen gas which is often collected over water. So we're going to collect hydrogen gas, uh, but we're going to collect it in water, right? So the bubbling of the water will be our hydrogen gas, right? But part of that pressure will be the, um, uh, will be actually of the water vapor. So the hydrogen that is collected in a mixture of hydrogen and water vapor, right? So we're going to use now Dalton's law of partial pressure, where the total, the pressure total, is equal to the pressure of the hydrogen that we want to collect, plus the pressure of the water vapor. So I've got this table here uh, that shows the actual pressure of water vapor at the various temperatures. Right? So if we've got the actual entire pressure that we've calculated, right? let's say we're given this, we need to find this. So what we want to do is we want to look and find out. So let's say the entire pressure is 100 um, kilopascals. Right? So 100 kilopascals is the total. So the, the total pressure um, uh, within our system. But now we're doing it at a temperature of, let's say, um, 24 degrees Celsius. Right, so at 24 degrees Celsius. And we're trying to find the pressure of the hydrogen gas. But the pressure of the water vapor at 24 degrees Celsius is 2.98 kilopascals. So I want to isolate for the pressure of, this, of, of the hydrogen gas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over. 
And what I have to do is to make sure that I'm subtracting the pressure of the water from my overall total pressure, right? According to Dalton's law of partial pressure, you add up all the pressures of all the gases together. Okay? So we've got the total, we subtract whatever we know, which is from this table, right? So 100 um, kilopascals minus 2.98 kilopascals will give me 97.02 kilopascals. I think that's correct. So, that is now the pressure of the hydrogen gas, right? With a hypothetical. We'll see it with one of the first, uh, with the next sample problems that we're actually going to look at. So what we do is we take the overall pressure, subtract it by the pressure of the water vapor at that temperature to find the actual pressure of the actual gas that we're trying to collect. Sample problem. A student reacts magnesium with excess dilute hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas. She uses 0.15 grams of magnesium metal. What volume of dry hydrogen does she collect over water at 28 degrees Celsius and 101.8 kilopascals? So let's pretty much um, take a moment and write out what your givens are and try to put together as well a, uh, a, f a formula, uh, an actual balanced equation for this sample problem. We have temperature, 28 degrees Celsius, pressure, 101.8 kilopascals. We've got the mass of magnesium, which is 0.15 grams. We've got the pressure of water vapor at 28 degrees Celsius, which is 3.78 kilopascals. Right? So for those who don't, you know, are kind of tuning in at this point, this number was from the chart I gave in the previous slide. Okay. So we want to ultimately figure out what is the actual uh, formula that we're using. And, and here is the actual balanced equation. Magnesium plus 2HCl. Uh, hydrochloric acid produces magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So let's look at what we are given. So from the information that we're given, well, 28 degrees Celsius must be converted to 301 Kelvin. Right? We know our R value, 8.314 um, kilopascals, liters, moles, Kelvin. Right? So that's our, uh, ultimately what we're going to, uh, to need to find. So from the given, we know that 0 0.15 grams is actually magnesium. And we're trying to find what volume of dry hydrogen does she collect over water. That's what we're trying to find. Right? So we know now the pressure, the total pressure, right? pressure total is equal to 101.8 kilopascals, right? We know that the pressure of water is 3.78 kilopascals, so we're going to have to subtract, right? Because we only want the pressure of the hydrogen gas, so this is the overall pressure subtracted by the pressure of just the water vapor, and now the pressure that we need works out to 98.02 kilopascals, okay? So, with this bit of information, we know what the pressure is, right? So now, we want to find out the, um, the actual uh, the amount of magnesium. So we've got magnesium, the mass of magnesium, 0.15 grams. We're going to divide that by the molar mass of magnesium to give us the number of moles, 6.17 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. So now, let's look at um, this question now. We're being asked to find the volume. So now, we've got the moles, right? We've just calculated the number of moles of magnesium. So now, we can go through the chart, or we can look at the fact that it's a 1 to one ratio 
between magnesium and hydrogen gas, which means if the moles that we found for magnesium is 6.17 times 10 to the power of 3 moles, if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, then this mole ratio is equal for both the magnesium and the hydrogen gas. So now we can actually use our gas law, right, PV equals nRT, to actually find our volume. Right? So it's a one-to-one -one ratio between magnesium and hydrogen. So we don't need to worry about uh, any other calculation. So because it is a one-to-one -one ratio, right, we are going to just substitute. So isolate for V, V is equal to nRT over P. Right? Remember our, our new P value? Our new P value is that because we take the total subtracted by the uh, pressure that was contributed by the, uh, the water vapor. Remember that's using Dalton's law of partial pressure. So our N value is 6.17 times 10 to the power of negative 3 moles multiplied by our R value, which is 8.314 kilopascals of liter over moles of Kelvin, multiplied by our temperature, which is 301 Kelvin, divided by our pressure, our new pressure, which is 98.02 kilopascals. So we know volume is going to be in liters, so let's just uh, cancel out here. We've got Kelvin, Kelvin, moles, moles, kilopascals, kilopascals. Last unit standing is volume. So when we do the calculation, we get a volume that is equal to 0 0.1575 liters. Now, according to the question, least number of significant digits is 2. So we want the 0 0.15. We look at the 7. And the volume um, of the dry hydrogen that's collected is 0 0.16 liters. Next sample problem actually takes up the entire page here. Uh, when astronauts, and this is a similar question I've given uh, in the past, but now we're actually going to look at it, uh, make a couple of adjustments to the question. So when astronauts travel in, in a space shuttle, carbon dioxide must be removed from the air they breathe. One method is to bubble the air in the shuttle uh, through a solution of lithium hydroxide. The lithium hydroxide converts any carbon dioxide into lithium carbonate. So here's our, uh, uh, our formula. Okay. Two molecules of, uh, or two moles of lithium hydroxide combined with you know, um, carbon dioxide, with one uh, mole of carbon dioxide produces uh, one mole of lithium carbonate um, and uh, one mole of water. So air containing 25.0 liters of carbon dioxide is passed through 1.5 moles per liter of lithium hydroxide solution over a 20 minute period. The atmospheric pressure in the shuttle is 0.85 atmospheres and the temperature is 28.3 degrees Celsius. What mass of lithium carbonate is produced? Now, thing to keep in mind, although the air is bubbled through an aqueous solution, you do not need to consider the pressure of the water vapor. This is because you are dealing with the reactant and not the product. Right? We are not bubbling it through a solution of water. Okay? The water is the final product. So we are not going to need to find the, um, the actual pressure that's exerted by water at that temperature. Okay? So we have what the equation is. So let's uh, isolate our... Um, our givens. So here are our givens. We've got 25.0 liters, 28.3 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to actually not 101.3 degrees Celsius, but actually 101.3 Kelvin. You gotta fix that. Um, the atmospheres, the pressure is 0.85 atmospheres, and our uh, R unit is 8.5. 314 kilopascals of liters over moles per Kelvin. So let me just uh, write out the actual equation here. So we've got two lithium hydroxide plus one mole of CO2 uh, produces lithium uh, 
carbonate plus water in liquid form. So, from this information that we've got, right, we are asked to find the mass of lithium carbonate. So, we're trying to find that. Okay. So, that's the bit of information that we're being asked to find. So, now, with the, um, the units that we're given, okay, we've got the, uh, the following bit of information. So, we've got pressure, we've got volume, we've got R, and temperature. So, looking at that, we can almost figure out we need to find our N value. So, we've got PV equals N. So we're trying to find the actual moles of the lithium carbonate. So isolate for N. N is equal to PB over RT. So uh, actually, let's put it there. Let's put it underneath. So to find our N, let's uh, make a couple of, uh, of changes. Right? One thing, um, with one of the previous lessons, we decided to change the R value. What I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to change, just to show you guys, there's really no big difference. We're going to change the atmospheres into kilopascals. So we're going to multiply by, well, 101.3 kilopascals, because 101.3 kilopascals is equivalent to one atmosphere. So atmospheres will cancel out. So 0.85 times 101.3 kilopascals will give me a pressure of 86.105 kilopascals. Okay. So let's use now that new number. All right, so we've got 86.105 kilopascals multiplied by our volume, which is 25.0 liters, divided by our R value, which is 8.314 kilopascals liters, moles, Kelvin, multiplied by my temperature, which is 301.3 Kelvin. So notice here, Kelvin cancel out here, liters, kilopascals, and I'm left with moles. So the number of moles that I calculated is 0 0.8. Five, nine, three moles. So now, this is the actual number of moles of the carbon dioxide, but because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we know that this is good for both carbon dioxide and the lithium carbonate. So we're going to take this, the number of moles here, right? and we want to find the mass. So that's what we're trying to find. The mass, and we know that the mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. And so the molar mass that we're trying to find is of lithium carbonate. So the number of moles that we have, 0 0.8593 moles. We're going to multiply it by the molar mass of lithium carbonate. And the number of moles, of, uh, the molar mass of lithium carbonate is 73.89 grams per mole. So moles cancel out. When I multiply those two numbers together, I get 63.49 grams. The least number of significant digits in my question is 3. So I want the 63.4, but I look at that number right after it. Actually, no, I want uh, what are the least number. No, 2. I want two significant digits. So let me use a different color. So I want these two. I look at the 4, right? And that 4 doesn't change anything. So the mass of the lithium carbonate is 63 grams, okay? So the mass of the lithium carbonate that's produced is 63 